Well, let's turn now to a tale of two transports. The airline-focused Jets ETF hit hard this week, down more than 13 percent, its worst week since April 2020. But check out railroad and trucking names. CSX, Norfolk Southern, CH Robinson, today's top performers in the S&P. And the Dow Transport's actually up this week. So what gives? Where are we headed? Carter Worth and Worth Charting may have some answers. Um, truly bifurcated trade here, Carter. Very. And here's the most remarkable thing about the bifurcation. It's business as usual. And we're going to see it in the chart. It's been going on forever. So look at the first chart. It's a comparative chart. It's three lines. It's very straightforward. The first is, of course, the road and rail index, which is up 4.9%. This is a three-month chart versus the Dow Jones transportation average, of which those stocks are constituents, down 3.6, and the S&P down 4.6. Okay. Now let's pull it back a little further. Next chart. This is a five-year comparative chart. And here's where it gets interesting. The winner on top, right, is the road and rail index, up some 145% versus the S&P over a five-year period, up 80, and the transports, the oldest index of all, up 60. Now look at this same chart, but put in jets, the ETF, down there on the bottom, bringing up the rear, down 35%, yes, over the past five years. So road and rail, I have been leading the S&P, which in turn has been leading the transports. And you could actually take this comparative chart back 10 years. Uh, you can take it back further. Um, road and rail, winning of late, but they've been winning forever. And take a look at the chart itself. You see it here. It's just a setup for a breakout. And then by contradistinction, look at the chart of Jets. Final chart, it's breaking down. And the interesting thing is Jets doesn't have a lot of history. QDTF, great symbol, Jets. But if you look at the New York Stock Exchange airline index that does go back to the late 80s, basically, it's the same level as it was then, 33 years later. It's a bad business, airlines. And, wow. Uh, <laughs> bad. It's amazing. Well, it's, it's a bad business when oil is spiking, right, Carter? I mean, how much... No, but if... Okay, hold on, hold on. If you haven't made any progress in 33 years, it doesn't matter what the current story is. It's a bad business. I mean, Fair enough. I think that's hard to argue. With well, it's almost like the football team, um, But, Carter, too. before you go, before we know you to get prepped for OA. Um, your oil call, which you made last week, you said oil is going to run oh, out of gosh. energy, so to speak. <laughs> it's the exact it doesn't opposite. look like yes. it. But So what no do you good. say? Right, so that was a follow-up. I, you know, with a little luck, we get the buy at 65, sell at 95. Now we're uh, not, you know, it's wrong. It it's, could go anywhere it wants. Oh, okay. Carter, thank you. We'll see yeah. you later. Carter Braxton Worth of Worth Charting. Pete Najarian, you stick with the uh, road and rail stocks, dump airlines. Yeah, I do. And what I like, Mel, is that we had a lot of option paper today in CSX. Now, Granted, the stock, the stock has made this move this month, and when I say this month, I mean March, just a couple of days, where we've gone from 33 to 37 in a hurry. So we're back up to where we were at the start of January, but that's near the all-time highs as we've looked back at, at CSX. So it's interesting to see today that we had three different hits on the options world where they were buying upside calls in this, na in, in this specific name. They weren't buying it in the other names. They were just going after CSX, and they bought very large chunks of the May 40s, and they went out for the March 40s, and they bought the, the April 37 and a half calls. They were buying aggressively in all of them. They bought 18,000 of those May 40s. And by the way, in the final six minutes of the day is when they actually executed 18,000 of those June 40 calls. So a lot of activity out there. They say it's going higher. I'm going to ride it because so far the derivatives markets have been dead on on many of these types of plays, Mel. I think that the point that Tim was getting at is an important distinction. I mean, Carter saying that the line has gone nowhere, basically. The chart has gone nowhere for 30-something years. I mean, that is a, it's hard to Ouch. argue. But that doesn't mean it's not they're not trading vehicles, Jeff. And you can't make money on the swings on a Jets or an XAL in between. Sure, you could. And we've seen them bounce. And, and they could bounce now. But I, I've said this before, too. I think that there's been a fundamental change in some of these businesses I think about banks after 2008, there were multi-year laggards because of what they went through. And I think you're getting more of the same. If I, was, if I wanted a reopening play, I'd probably rather look to an MGM or, or a Live Nation. But just very quickly on the rails, um, I did put together a chart just because I was curious. I charted the relative performance of Union Pacific against the S&P 500, and I put that against manufacturing PMI, just a gauge of the economy. And the one note of caution is, you know, we're talking about this possible economic slowdown. PMIs have already started to roll over a little bit. So do the rails follow economic growth down relative to the S&P 500? That has been the history over the past 10 years.